We're continuing with our series of understanding the prayer and the whole purpose of this series is to review the correct way to perform our prayers the way the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us and we are taking everything directly from the authentic hadiths. I am not using any book written by Tom, Dick, Jane, or Harry. I'm all using nothing but the authentic Hadith books, okay, to teach you guys how to perform your prayer correctly because prayer is an act of worship and all acts of worship must be performed the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. And today we're going to speak about the prerequisites, the prerequisites of the prayer. In other words, things that you should do before praying. And as of course, the number one prerequisite is you have to have wudu. Does everybody understand that you have to have wudu? Allah does not accept your prayers if you are not in a state of purity. Listen to what Allah says in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning. O oh, you who believe, when you stand for the prayer, wash your faces, your hands to the elbows, and lightly rub your hands and wash your feet to the ankles. If you are unclean, purify yourself. So that verse of the Quran is the evidence that in order for your prayer to be accepted, you must have wudu. And we already talked about how to make wudu. All of you should know the correct way to make wudu. Also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah does not accept any prayer that was not performed while in a state of purity, nor does he accept charity from what has been stolen. Okay, so thus, in order for the prayer to be accepted, you have to have wudu. Okay. What about your body, your clothes, and the place that you're praying? Do those place things have to be clean too? Well, in regards to bodily purity, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to stay clean of urine because the majority of the people who are punished in their graves is because they used to pray to Allah with urine or feces in their underwear. So you want to make sure, guys, that there is no urine or no feces in your underwear. This is why when we answer the call of nature, you want to make sure that you wipe yourself really good with tissue or use water or wipes or whatever to get that impurity off of you. And also remember, we have the Hadith from Ali. He said that he used to have a lot of prosthetic fluid that would leak out of him. So he asked someone to ask the prophet about it. And the prophet told him to make wudu and wash your penis. So again, we talked about this. If you are a female and you are having that vaginal discharge that comes from a woman just is part of the body's way of purifying itself. You simply just uh, wash your your private part and then make wudu before you pray. And if you're a man, the same thing. If you see that prosthetic fluid coming out of your private part, you wash it and then make wudu and pray. Okay. So again, you want to make sure that you are free of those things. You know, when it comes to praying, and in regards to having clean clothing. Remember, Allah tells us in the Quran and in the interpretation, the meaning, purify your raiment. In other words, make sure that your clothing is clean. We have a hadith where one of the companions said that he heard a person ask the prophet. He said, oh, prophet of Allah, can I pray in the same clothes that I had on when I had intercourse with my wife? He said, yes, but if you see some stains on it, just wash it. So again, you know, you know, if you want to pray in your pajamas or whatever, you know, 
even after having relations with your wife, make sure, you know, it's okay to do so. But if you see a stain on it, just, you know, wash the stain out. Also, we have another hadith where another companion asked Um Habiba, who was one of the wives of the prophet. He asked her, did the prophet pray in the same clothes that he wore when he had intercourse? She said, yes, if there were no stains on it. So again, if there's no stains on your garment, you know, you can pray on it. So you want to check to make sure that whatever garment that you're wearing is free of stains, you know, from intercourse or whatever. Okay. Also, we have another hadith. Uh, whereas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam removed his shoes and the people who were standing behind him took their shoes off too. And when he had finished praying, he asked them, why did you take off your shoes? They said, we saw you take off yours, so we took ours off too. He said, well, the reason I took mine off is because the angel Jibril came to me and told me that there was some dirt or some filth on him. So when one of you comes to the mosque, you should turn your shoes over and look at them. If you find any dirt on them, then rub them against the ground to wipe the dirt off and then pray. So here you can see, first of all, you learn two things from this hadith. You learn from this hadith that there is nothing wrong with praying in your shoes. Believe it or not, there are some Muslims out there who are so ignorant that they will tell you that you cannot pray in your shoes. Where do they get this from? The prophet lived in the desert. The desert is hot. They wore shoes. Okay. So you learn that there's nothing wrong with praying in your shoes. And you also learn from this hadith though that when you do go to pray, you want to check the bottom of your shoes to make sure that there's no dirt on them. If you see dirt, just simply rub the dirt off against the ground. You kick the shoe on the ground and rub it on the ground to get the dirt off and then pray. Okay. So you want to make sure that the clothing that you wear is clean, your shoes are clean. What about the place where you're praying? Should it be clean too? Well, we have a hadith whereas a Bedouin came into the mosque and urinated. The people got up to attack him. The prophet told the people, leave him alone and just take some water and pour it over his urine. And that's what they did. So again, you want to make sure that the place that you're praying is clean too. You don't have to mop the floor or any of that. Pour some water. If you see that there's urine or feces or something like that, just pour some water over to wash it out the way and then go ahead and make your salat. Okay, so you want to make sure the place that you're praying in is, is clean. Also, your clothing is clean. Your shoes are clean and all of that when it's time to pray. Okay, and now what we want to talk about is covering the aura or the nakedness, covering your body, your nakedness. Allah tells us in the Quran and in the interpretation of the meaning, O children of Adam, take your adornment by wearing proper clothing for every mosque. The meaning of the word adornment here is to cover your nakedness. And the meaning of the mosque here is when you go to pray. So here Allah is telling us in this verse, O children of Adam, cover your nakedness for every prayer. So you don't want to pray naked. Uh, right before uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received uh, the prophethood, uh, the people used to make tawaf around the Kaaba naked. Okay, you can't do that. You know, we have to pray with clothing on, cover your nakedness. Okay, and as for a man, we have a hadith whereas uh, a man came to the prophet and said, Oh, prophet of Allah, can I pray in a long shirt? The prophet said, Yes, but button it, even if it's just with one thorn. So you see in this picture here, this is a man, he's got his private parts covered. So you want to make sure that you cover yourself. You don't want to pray naked, okay? You want to cover your nakedness, okay? And even with a woman, the woman has to cover her nakedness too. And remember, for a woman, her whole body is part of her nakedness except for her face and hands. A woman's whole body is part of her nakedness except for her face and hands. Okay, so when you stand to pray as a woman, you want to make sure that your body is covered 
except for your face and hands. Allah says in the Quran and the interpretation of meaning and to display of their adornment only that which is apparent. And again, we talked about this in a previous class, um, all of the companions except for one. All of the companions except for one said uh, that uh, when Allah is talking about except what is parent, he's, he's talking about the face and the hands. So a woman needs to wear a hijab and she wants to have her body covered as well. Uh, listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, Allah does not accept the prayer of an adult woman unless she is wearing a kimar, a hijab, which is a head covering or something to cover her body. Okay. And also for a woman, your feet, the top of your feet, the top of your feet is also included as part of your nakedness. It must be covered. We have the hadith uh, from Umm Salama, who was one of the wives of the prophet. She asked him, can a woman pray in a long skirt or a, uh, or a long night shirt and a head covering without a loincloth? He said, yes, if the shirt is long and flowing and covers the top of her feet. So that hadith there is the proof that a woman's the top of your feet is also part of your nakedness as a Muslim woman. So you want to be covered, you know, everything except your face and hands. But I want you women to understand this. A woman can pray in anything as long as it covers her nakedness, even if what she is wearing is tight fitting. You understand that even if what she is wearing is tight fitting look at this picture here you see these two women they are praying okay but they have a tight fitting pants they have a tight fitting skirt on in other words you can see the shape of their body guess what this is still permissible their prayers are still accepted listen to this hadith Aisha was asked, and how many garments is a woman allowed to pray? And she told the person to go and ask Ali because she wanted to see if Ali gave the, the correct answer too. The person did, and, and the, they came back and said, Ali said, in a head covering and a long flowing shirt. Aisha said he's told the truth. So again, it doesn't, there's nothing in Islam that specifies how many pieces of clothing a woman has to have on. As long as it covers her, the clothes must cover her nakedness, even if the clothing is tight enough to highlight the features. But the clothing cannot be see-through. So if you look at this picture, these are two women praying. And they are praying in clothing that covers their body, but the clothing is tight-fitting. Their prayer is still accepted. Okay. But if you could see their skin color. Then that it would not be acceptable. And this is why uh, a lot of the scholars will tell you sisters. That it's okay to wear socks. Okay. That it's okay to pray in socks. Because the skin color uh, 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 cannot be seen. But see in this picture this lady has on some socks. The top of her feet are not colored, but she got on socks. It's acceptable. This is still acceptable. I would tell you to make sure that you wear a praying garment that comes down and covers the top of your feet. If you ask me that question, I'm going to tell you, you can now buy garments. A woman can buy a praying garment that just, that just throws over her head and comes down to the floor. But if you did put on socks, this is okay too. Everybody understand that? Okay. All right. And for a man, it's a little bit different. For a man, it's preferred for a man to wear at least two garments if possible. But if he doesn't have but one garment to pray in, as long as it covers his nakedness, it's okay. We have the hadith from Ibn Umar that the prophet said, if one of you is going to pray, he should wear two garments because Allah is the most deserving the, of you to look good for him and if you don't have two garments then cover yourself with a cloak when you pray but don't be like the jews so that's the proof that if he doesn't have two garments he can use just the one okay 
All right, and also we have another hadith here that Ubayah ibn Qab and ibn Masu got into an argument. Ubay thought it was permissible to pray in one garment, but, but ibn Masu said that it was allowed only if you didn't have any other clothing. Umar stood on the pulpit and said the correct answer is if Allah gives you enough clothing, then you should wear more clothing. A man can gather his clothes around him or pray in a waist cloak and a clo a cloth and a cloak or in a waist cloth or a shirt or in trousers and a shirt or in trousers and a caftan. Okay, so here you can see from this hadith, you know, again, that first of all, nobody understood religion better than Umar except for Abu Bakr. So if you have a, a dispute between Ibn Masood and somebody else and Umar, we take Umar's word over everybody else's. And Umar is saying that a man can pray in a shirt and a pair of pants. He can pray in a, a, a waist, uh, a cloth or whatever, as long as his um, private parts is covered. Okay. And also, a man does not have to cover his head. This is another question, believe it or not, that I get a lot of, of questions from other Muslims about, does a man have to wear a kufi or a hat, a hat to cover his head? The answer is no. Uh, sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would take off his cap and use it as a sutra on the floor. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't cover his head all the time when he prayed. Sometimes he'd take that turban off, you know, so, you know, a man doesn't have to cover his head, but a woman does. Also, another prerequisite, you must face the direction of the Qibla. If you can see it, if you know what the direction is, okay, uh, Allah tells us in the Quran, turn your face to the mosque El Haram, wherever you may be, turn your faces towards it. And then we have the hadith how uh, in the beginning of Islam, the Muslims used to pray facing Jerusalem until Allah sent down this verse of the Quran. And then the people uh, uh, turned to, uh, towards the Kaaba. So again, you want to face the direction of the Kaaba, you know. And again, if you don't know which direction the Kaaba is, take a guess. But if you find out later that the direction that you prayed in was not correct, you do not, and I repeat, you do not have to remake that prayer over. And this is another question a lot of Muslims ask. You were praying facing the wrong direction. You did not know that that was not the correct direction. You do not have to make those prayers over. Okay, but try to determine the direction of the Qibla. Look at the direction in which the sun sets. I always use that as my clue because those Islamic finders, I can't work those compasses. I I just moved to a new place now. I put it down. I, I don't know what the heck that thing is saying. It, it goes all over the place. So I look to see the direction of the sun. I look to see where the sun rises and the sun sets. Okay. So thus, guys, these are some of the prerequisites of the prayer. You want to, first of all, remember, in order for your prayers to be accepted, you have to have wudu. If you don't have wudu, it's not going to be accepted. Also, you want to make sure that your clothing is free of stains, urine from yourself and feces from yourself, too. And also make sure that it's free of any stains from relations with your wife or whatnot. If you see something on your clothing from that, scrape it off, wash it off or whatnot, and then pray in it, okay? Also, you want to make sure that you're covered properly. A Muslim woman <coughs> has to have her entire body covered except for her face and hands. And even if the clothing is tight-fitting, it's still acceptable as long as you can't see the skin, okay? And this, I know that's probably something new for you sisters. A lot of you didn't know that. Even if it's tight fitting, as long as the skin is not seen, it's acceptable, okay? Also for you brothers, it's preferred for you to pray in two garments, but if you only have one, that's fine as long as your nakedness is covered. You want to also make sure the area in which you're praying is clean. Make sure that your shoes are clean. They don't have any feces on the bottom of them, you know, and all of that. And we'll stop right here for today. Tomorrow we'll continue 
by going into the details of how the prayer is performed. So we'll stop right here. Protectors of the Suna. Suna Baba. Protectors of the Suna.